Okay, this is from the book, John McDougall, The Doctor Who Fought for You by me, Pete Rogers. Uh, we're going to be talking again, continuing with the chapter on obesity and fat. This is part five. Okay, and it starts out with, what about the fat vegan? Yeah, a lot of vegans are fat, and usually they're people who are vegans, not for health reasons, but for like ethical reasons, you know, for animal rights or something like that. Um, and a lot of them, they eat high fat plant foods, you know, nuts and seeds are 70 to 90% fat. Chef AJ is a good example of somebody who couldn't lose the weight until she stopped eating the nuts and seeds. Um, any, the higher the percentage of calories for fat, the fatter the population tends to be. So if you want to lose weight, you want to minimize percent of calories from dietary fat. It's impossible to be too low in dietary fat with any naturally chosen diet. Uh, look at avocados, 88% 80, 80, of calories from fat. Olives, 90% of calories from fat. So if you really want to lose weight and you're having difficulty, you should avoid these foods. So here's Dr. McDougall. He says, eating oil makes you wear oil. You get oily skin and acne, including from olive oil. Nuts and seeds are probably the biggest reason for fat vegans. Um, dried, fruits also, dried fruits also contribute to causing obesity. Um, this is Dr. McDougall. He says, I can eat 20 dried apples in the time it takes to eat two regular apples. Juice can lead to obesity. You don't improve the quality of food by making it into a smoothie, you know, by beating it with the blade all those times. When people want to lose weight, I recommend to reduce fruit intake to only one or two servings per day. Good to avoid, also avoid eating breads for losing weight. If you eat more greens, you will lose weight faster. And it's also been said, you know, like Chef Age will say, eat your veggies first. You'll stretch your stomach. McDougall would normally say only eat 5% of your calories from uh, from greens and about 90% from starch, 5% from fruits. But he says when you want to lose weight fast, just keep on increasing the percent from greens. Greens have a very low caloric density. So get that to 20%, 30%, even 40%. He even said you can go as high as 50%, no, but no more than that. Otherwise, you end up with some problem I think he called like rabbit starvation or something. We're not going to get into that right now. But anyways, the more greens you eat, the faster you will lose weight. He says avoid soy if you're trying to lose weight. And, you know, probably because soy's got a lot of fat in it. Soy's like 37, 40% of calories from fat. That's a lot. Do not add salt. Salt makes the food taste better and you're going to eat more of it. Avoid eating out because they usually put oil in your food. Um, if you actually follow this diet, you will move towards your optimal body weight. The McDougall diet is usually about 90% starch, 10% fruits and vegetables. However, when a patient is trying to lose weight, I recommend increasing the amount of vegetables. This is Dr. McDougall speaking here. He says, to lose weight, I recommend to decrease starch to about 70% of calories and then make 25% come from greens and yellow veggies, the other 5% from fruit. The more green and yellow veggies a person eats, the more they will lose weight. A person can eat up to 50% of their calories in the form of green and yellow veggies, but they can't go beyond that. If you try to go beyond 50% of the calories, they won't be able to satisfy their hunger. Okay, so you don't want to do that. All right, uh, Walter Kempner was born in 1903 in Germany. His mentor was Otto Warburg, the great biochemist. Kempner fled Germany in the 1930s, was able to get a job at Duke University in North Carolina. Kempner had done a lot of research on the kidneys before that, and he had a good background for thinking about diets to prevent hypertension and kidney failure. Um, he had a, the, Walter Kempner had an unprecedented record of curing chronic dietary diseases. The drug therapies don't even come close to the results of Dr. Kempner. Kempner's diet was white rice, like Uncle Ben's rice, fruit, fruit juice, table sugar, and vitamins. His diet consisted of about 94% carbohydrate, 4% protein and 2% fat. So, I mean, that's an important thing to hear. Did you hear that? 94% carbohydrate, only 4% protein, less than 5% of calories from protein, and only 2% from fat. So he really got the fat down. And this diet was very protective of the kidneys, very preventative of hypertension, and also very good for weight loss. The fruit and rice were chosen because they were very low in sodium. They're also low in protein. That protects the kidney. The main thing the kidneys do is excrete nitrogen. A lot of his patients were in kidney failure. Fruits and vegetables are also very alkaline. The second job of the kidney is to excrete acid. So when you eat an alkaline diet, you lower the workload of the kidneys. Kepmer's diet had incredibly low sodium, as low as 100 milligrams per day, and that's a really low amount of sodium. So he had to monitor his patients. When you get it down that low, you have to monitor them. If you eat naturally occurring diets, you'll probably be in the ballpark of something like you know, 200, 250 to 500 milligrams per day of sodium. It was rare for some patients 
when this was to, to, for this to be too low of a sodium, and they were at risk to become sodium depleted. These were patients, for example, who might have something like syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion, who couldn't dilute their urine adequately. Uh, also, some patients who had had bowel surgery. So those are pretty rare situations. Frank Nilon, MD, he was a doctor who worked with Dr. Kempner. He's got videos on the internet, Frank Nilon, at Dr. McDougall's channel. Uh, the doctor who worked with Dr. Kempner said that nowadays, if he was treating patients with the rice diet, he would probably aim for giving them about 500 to 700 milligrams of sodium per day. Kempner had wanted to get the sodium down real low because he felt there was a threshold point where it starts to have a dramatic, big benefit for preventing hypertension. Whereas when you're in the thousands, you know, if you go from 4,000 to 2,000 milligrams of sodium per day, you don't get that big of a benefit. But if you go from, let's say, 4,000 down to 500 milligrams, you'll have a much bigger benefit. Uh, Nilon says he typically takes patients, tries to take patients off their blood pressure medications as much as possible. He says that when he is reluctantly obligated to give an antihypertensive medicine, here, let me uh, scroll the page here. He tries to give the lowest possible dose. Uh, calories were, were restricted only when weight loss was the goal. So part of his weight loss patient was calorie restriction, especially early on. Um, here's a reference for that from the Newburg book. She wrote the, bi the biography of Walter Kempner and the Rice Diet 2011. Um, the patients had to follow the Kempner Rice Diet closely or it doesn't work well. If patients were losing too much weight, he would allow them to eat white sugar to get extra calories. Again, you know, he liked the white sugar because there's no protein in it. Um, he's trying to protect the kidneys. Kempner published a study where he had a group of weight loss patients, 106 of them, who had lost an average of 140 pounds, with each of them losing at least 99 pounds. So Kempner had tons of successful weight loss patients. He sort of, you know, started out with the kidney failure hypertensive patients, and then he became famous for the weight loss. He was the biggest moneymaker at the whole Duke Hospital for a long time. Beginning in 1944, Ansel Keys, he lived from 1904 to 2004, so that's a good long life, 100 years there. He helped with the hunger starvation study done with Americans, mostly conscientious objectors. It was called the Minnesota Starvation Experiment, MSE. The 36 men in the study were fed a semi-starvation diet for six months at 1,570 calories per day. All of the men started trim from a normal weight. The food served was potatoes, turnips, rutabagas, dark bread, and macaroni. There were sufficient calories served to prevent ketosis. As the partial starvation continued, they became obsessed with food. They felt a decrease in sex drive. All interest in women and dating was lost. They talked about food, read about food, dreamed about food, even daydreamed about food. When they were actually served a meal, they guarded it defensively with their elbows. They ate the food served to them down to the last crumb and licked their plates clean. Some even became upset when non-participants in the cafeteria wasted food. When a person is starving, they only see food. They commonly had anxiety and depression. They developed extreme tiredness, cold intolerance, muscle soreness, sunken faces and bellies and hair loss. Some lost 33% of their body weight loss. 50 pounds, which is a lot when you're starting at a normal weight. So here's the reference, you know, the journal of this right here. Okay, most people have a set point for their body weight. And you can see this if you're just around people for, you know, a year. You'll just look, the people all tend to stay about the same weight. On a given diet, the body has a set point for how much that person will eat and how much they will weigh. Eating a high-fat diet makes a set point high, so they tend to be fat. Um, eating a high-fat diet with oils tends to make them even fatter. After the Minnesota starvation experiment, the patients underwent two months of rehab where they were allowed to eat unrestricted amounts of food. The interesting thing is that many of them gained back more weight than their original body weight. This is called hyperhunger overshoot of set point. In other words, they were so hungry that they ate too much. It's as if their bodies were saying, we almost starved to death. We need to gain more weight in case we ever go through that starvation stuff again. We'll be better prepared to survive it. That's partly why people go on these diets and starve themselves, and then they start binge eating and gain back more weight than they lost to begin with. The point is that starvation dieting can lead to weight gain. Because the person goes back to the original diet that made them fat in the first place, but now their body fears starvation and they overeat, hyperphagia, which causes them to increase their set point to higher body weight. So this is, explains the yo-yo dieting with gradual fattening of the person. Here's some references from Dr. McDougall's work. After the Minnesota starvation experiment and the men were allowed to eat, their favorite food was the potato. Potatoes were the most hunger-satisfying food. 
High fat foods do not satisfy hunger well. The person tends to overeat too many calories. It seems that the body is unable to rapidly detect the high energy density of fatty foods. And these are some of the sources for this information. You know, why am I fat and hunger? It's, um, the videos at Dr. McDougall's channel as well as his interview with uh, Frank Nilon. Uh, so hope you hope that was helpful.